Hello, St. Columbus. The Collect for Monday, Thursday. God be with you, and also with you. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I would now like to share a passage from Dom Gregory Dix, The Shape of Liturgy, from 1945. Throughout all ages, world without end. At the heart of it all is the Eucharistic action, a thing of an absolute simplicity, the taking, blessing, breaking, and giving of bread, and the taking, blessing, and giving of a cup of wine and water, as these were first done with their new meaning by a young Jew before and after supper with his friends on the night before he died. He had told his friends to do this henceforward with the new meaning for the remembrance of him, and they have done it ever since. Was ever another command so obeyed? For century after century, spreading slowly to every continent and country, and among every people on earth, this action has been done in every conceivable human circumstance, for every conceivable human need, from infancy and before it, to extreme old age and after it, from the pinnacle of earthly greatness to the refuge of fugitives in the caves and dens of the earth. People have found no better thing than this to do for monarchs at their crowning and for criminals going to the scaffold, for armies in triumph and for a bride and bridegroom in a little country church for the proclamation of a dogma, or for a good crop of wheat, for the wisdom of the parliament of a mighty nation, or for a sick old woman afraid to die, for a schoolboy sitting in examination, for the famine of whole provinces, or for the soul of a dead lover, in thankfulness because my father did not die of pneumonia, for a village headman much tempted to return to Fetich because the yams had failed, because the Turk was at the gates of Vienna, for the repentance of Margaret, for the settlement of a strike, for a son, for a barren woman, for Captain so-and-so wounded and prisoner of war, while the lions roared in the nearby amphitheater, on the beach at Dunkirk, while the hiss of scythes in the thick June grass came faintly through the windows of the church, tremulously by an old monk on the 50th anniversary of his vows, furtively by an exiled bishop who had hewn timber all day in a prison camp near Mermanx, gorgeously for the canonization of St. Joan of Arc, One could fill many pages with the reasons why people have done this and not tell a hundredth part of them. And best of all, week by week and month by month, on a hundred thousand successive Sundays, faithfully, unfailingly, across all the parishes of Christendom, the pastors have done this, and yet this can still take hold of a person's life and work with it. Tonight at 7 p.m., we commemorate the night a young Jew broke bread and poured wine for his friends, asking them to do this in remembrance of him. We invite you to join us on Zoom. Please bring with you two candles, some wine, water, or juice, and some bread. Together, we will hear the story of the night before Jesus' death. We will bless our elements and share in this practice that ties us back to the First Eucharist. You can register at columba.org to get the Zoom link. I look forward to seeing you there.